Hi everybody, it's Richard here again and welcome to another video. Now this is a continuation of the series uh, of my favourite albums from the years 1965 to 1989 and I put a poll up of 1971, 1967 and 1974 and 1971 was victorious uh, with over 50% of the vote so 71 is what I'll do. Okay, as normal, I'm going to have three bubbling unders, and uh, they are ELO, their very first album, Electric Light Orchestra, which um, I think is a half a very good album. I really do like the Jeff Lynn songs on it, like Mr. Radio and uh, Queen of the Hours is my favourite on the whole album. 105.3 at Overture is very good, which Paul Weller nicked the opening riff for The Changing Man, and Nelly takes her by, but it's the Roy Wood stuff, which I don't think is as good. Things like Battle of Marston Moor are difficult to get into. Um, Look at Me Now is not bad, but generally speaking, it's the Jeff Lynne uh, tracks that carry it. Another one is uh, Frida and her debut album from 1971. Now, I would normally have had this in the top 30, but I can't because um, it's all in Swedish and I don't know what she's singing, but it's a really enjoyable listening, all the same. But I would love to know what she's, the actual words she's singing. Although she does do cover versions. Uh, one of The Sounds of Silence, which is very good. And one of Suzanne, the Leonard Cohen song, which is excellent. My favourite track, though, is her version of I Don't Know How to Love Him. The Andrew Lloyd Webber track. Now, she also does the song Licka, uh, which is, I think it's, that's how you pronounce it, written by Bjorn and Benny, which I think is better than Bjorn and Benny's version. And on the song um, Men Egan Stad, I don't know if I pronounced that, you have all four members of ABBA because Agneta is doing back and vocals as is Bjorn, as is Benny, even though Benny is throughout the whole album and piano. But it's a really good album that just can't make my top 30. And the other bubbling under is Wings Wildlife, which I think is a decent album. It contains Tomorrow, one of uh, McCartney's best early solo songs, which I think is brilliant. And I also love Mumble. I think it's just a really good jam. Bit Bop's not bad. Um, it's catchy. But things like um, Wildlife and Dear Friend are good songs, but they go on a bit too long. It's a rushed album, and it was intentionally rushed, but it's still not a bad album. Okay, getting into my uh, favourite 30, and as I say, these are my favourite albums. Obviously, if some of your albums aren't here, it means either one, I haven't heard them, or two, I'm not that keen on them. So, uh, number 30, and I'm going with Johnny Cash, The Man in Black. And this is your normal standard boom, chicka boom, Johnny Cash. It's got the brilliant title track. I love the acoustic guitar on that. The best song of this is Singing in Vietnam, Talking Blues. I think it is absolutely brilliant. It's a um, very political song. Uh, it's about uh, the, the American soldiers in Vietnam and Johnny and June going down to the hospital to see them and so forth. It's uh, it's, it's all about war. It's, but it's a really, really good song. I also do like The Preacher Said, Jesus Said with um, sound bites of Billy Graham in it, which I think is very, very good. Again, it's religious, but it's still a good song. Orphan of the Road is a beautiful song. Uh, Dear Mrs. is dreadful. It's one of those um, talking songs and it's a, a pull at the heartstrings, but it's awful. It's the worst song on this. Uh, if Not For Love is very good. I do like this. Really good album by Johnny Cash, one of his better ones of the 1970s. At number 29, and I have Olivia Newton John and her debut album. I think this is really good. It is country as well, so that's like two country ones in a row, but you get the two singles, If Not For You, her cover of the George Harrison cover of If Not For You, the Bob Dylan song, because it's more like George Harrison's version, and Banks of the Ohio, or the Banks of the Ohio. Uh, but yeah, she does a really good version of Help Me Make It Through the Night. I love the song In A Station. I think it is great. Uh, no Regrets, very, very good. If, yeah, okay. Uh, me and Bobby McGee, very very good, the Chris Christopherson song. But yeah, th my brother had this um, whenever he was a kid. Uh, it's one of the first albums ever to come into our house. So uh, that's why I like this a lot. Uh, it's guess my number 29. And number 28, and another female singer, and it's Melanie, and it is Gather Me. And this is the one with a brand new key on it, which was a single that I got whenever I was a kid, which I still love. 
a little bit of me is fantastic opener and someday I'll be a farmer is as catchy as brand new key really really good track Steppen is excellent uh, ring the living bell love it it's a little bit like lay down from the candles in the rain album uh, but I think ring the living bell is a better song Railroad not as keen on some say I got devils a good track it was the B side brand new key and Morrissey covered that on his uh, California Sun album but there's a track on here called Baby Day, absolutely love it, really really good song and a beautiful little ballad called Tell Me Why at the end and there will be another Tell Me Why mentioned in this video. So number 28 is Gather Me by Melanie. And number 27 and this was not going to be included until I played it this week and I really enjoyed it. Uh, it's the face is uh, a nod, it's as good as a wink to a blind horse. And this is the one with a brilliant single, Stay With Me, which I've always loved. Miss Judy's Farm is a very, very good opener. Uh, Love Lies Here is a, a really good, it's a sort of slowy song with Rod Stewart on vocals. He doesn't sing them all because Ronnie Lane sings some. Debris is the best of the Ronnie Lane songs. And to hear Rod Stewart actually do the backing vocals I think is really good. It's, it's, it's different because you normally expect him to be the lead singer and somebody else do the backing vocals. But it works so well. But the last two tracks are really brilliant rockers. Uh, too bad, and that's all you need. And this is a very good album. The faces uh, uh, nods as good as a wink to a blind horse. So that's my number 27. And number 26, and another rocking album, and it's Deep Purple and Rock. And I am new to this album, so I am not as familiar with this as I am with some of the other ones. But I do love Speed King. I think it's a really good opener and I really love the song Bloodsucker. Another one that I think is great is Flight of the Rat, which I think is great. But the highlight of this, without a doubt, is Child in Time. Now, it's very heavy on the keyboards rather than the guitar, but it is an absolute classic. So it is, and it's up there with your Laylas and things like that there and Stairway to Heaven. So uh, Deep Purple in Rock gets my number 26. At number 25 and we have the move message from the country and this is actually shines on this is the only vinyl copy I have this here is the CD of message from the country which I'll show here I don't have the actual vinyl of it this however is message from the country um, but it's got a few extra tracks on it like um, tonight California man China Chinatown and do ya so the singles and b-sides are tagged on but this is a really good album. This was recorded just shortly before, or I think some of the tracks were actually recorded around the same time as uh, the ELO album. But where the Roy Wood ones I struggle with on ELO, I don't struggle with on this, and that's why this is higher. I think Message from the Country is a very good opener, slightly reminiscent of 1053 Overture. Ella James is a great song. A Roy Wood track, No Time, is a very good uh, Jeff Lynne song. Don't Mess Me Up is like a little rockabilly country track which was written by Bev Bevan but it was actually sung by Roy Wood but it's, it's a nice change Until Your Mum Is Gone is one of those Roy Wood heavy songs as is It Wasn't My Idea To Dance The Minister by Jeff Lynn. I've read that a lot of people think it sounds like paperback writer it doesn't Bell, Ben Crawley Steel Company is a Roy Wood track but this one is done by Beth uh, Bevan um, it is like a little country track and uh, the words of Aaron is very good my Marge is rubbish so um, message from the country gets my number 25 and number 24 and we have Mott the Hoopball and Brain Capers and this was the one that whenever it failed they were going to pack it all in and Bowie said no and he wrote them all the young dudes uh, this has got the magnificent opener of Death May Be Your Santa Claus which is a fantastic riff um, Your Own Backyard, a very good song. I think Darkness Darkness was uh, a single off this, which is okay. It doesn't have Ian Hunter on vocal, so and it's the weakest of side one. And the side one finishes with The Journey, which is a real epic, not the hook track. On side two, you get The Moon Upstairs, which is an excellent track, but you also get um, Sweet Angeline, which is more like the Mot the Hoop from 73 74, and I would have fit perfectly on Mott or even the Hoople but this is a really good album and it is the best I think of their island years so Brian Capers gets my number 24 
And number 23, and this is like a bubblegum record, and it's a sweet, and it's funny, funny how Coco can be. Um, yeah, I think this is really good. It's got two big hit singles off it with Coco, number two, and Funny Funny, which was a top ten hit. There's some not so great songs off this, like um, Tom Tom Turnaround is alright. I've never been a huge fan of it, and Chop Chop is dreadful. But Honeysuckle Love is brilliant, and it's a, a track that they wrote themselves. I think it's a really good track. Santa Monica Sunshine, I think, is excellent as well. Genie is a very acoustic, almost country type song, really, really good. And Sunny Sleep Slate, which is catchy enough. Um, it's not too catchy, put it that way, unlike Chop Chop, which is terrible. But uh, Daydream, okay, the uh, Love and Spoonful song, and Spotlight is a good track. I do like this album quite a bit. I think it's very, very good. Um, okay, it's not the hard rock of the suite that you get from uh, Sweet Fanny Adams onwards, but it's still a very good album, and it gets my number 23 and number 22 and it's the Bee Gees and two years on and the reason they called it two years on is uh, it's two years since uh, the last time they were together with Odessa because Robin walked out and yeah this is your normal standard very early 70s Bee Gees although there are some very very good songs Lonely Days I think it's great and it's actually quite experimental for them. It's a little bit different, uh, especially in the course. Um, two Years On is a great track. Portrait of Louise is a beautiful song. Uh, my favourite track off this is uh, Tell Me Why. This um, is almost like a little country slow number that Barry sings, which is really, really good. Uh, there's a couple of sort of Bee Gees rockers, if you like, called Back Home and Every Second, Every Minute, which I think are very, very good as well. But yeah, it's a, it's a good album. It really is. And I think it's better than the one that Barry did with Morris, uh, Cucumber Castle. Oh, it's not bad either. So two years on gets my number 21. Or 22, sorry. And number 21 and it's Dog of Two Heads by Status Quo. And this is their last album for Pi. Uh, yeah, this actually has quite a bit of sort of pop type songs on it. Uh, the track uh, Na 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 I think is really, really good. It's catchy, but really good. Uh, Gerd and Ulla I think is excellent as well. It's almost like a, a folk type song. I used to call it Gerdundula, but it's Gerd and Ulla about uh, a fella called Gerd and a girl called Ulla. So Gerd and Ulla. Um, the track Something's Going On In My Head I think is one of the better ones. It's one of the more rocky ones. It's um, Alan Lancaster. But the big one off this is Mean Girl, which was pulled off this uh, two years later in 1973. I think it was after Caroline and it became a top ten hit. And I think it's a very, very good album. As I say, it's their last for pie. So Dog of Two Head gets my 21. A number 20 and it's Leonard Cohen and Songs of Love and Hate. And this is just the same as the first two albums. It's very, very stripped back, very uh, acoustic, and uh, very, very sparse. Uh, not very many other instruments. There's the odd instrument here and there, the odd bass guitar, and the odd back and vocal. But um, this includes Avalanche, which opens it, which I think is excellent. Uh, Last Year's Man is one of the better songs of this, and I think it got on to the great hits in the mid 70s. Diamonds in the Mine has got good back and vocals and it's one of the catchier ones. Uh, Sing Another Song Boys is a track that was recorded live and Joan of Arc which is the best song off this is absolutely beautiful. So uh, Songs of Love and Hate gets my number 20. At number 19 and we have Pink Floyd and Metal. And uh, yeah a good album top 6 Floyd for me. My favourite track off this is Fearless. I love it. I think it is really, really good. I love the instrumentation of it. And I do actually love the You'll Never Walk Alone, even though I'm not a Liverpool supporter. One of These Days is a great uh, opener, instrumental opener. Very, very good. Uh, a Pillow of the Winds, I think, is excellent. It's an acoustic number. Really, really nice. Um, Seamus is terrible. It's awful. It's like a blues number with the dog barking. Terrible. And then we get Echoes. Now Echoes is too long, but I do really like it. It takes up the whole of the side. There's a section of it from about 10 minutes to 15 minutes, which is just soundscapes, and it could have done without. 
I think the version on the Echoes double CD is better because it has been edited but it's still an excellent album absolutely awful cover though but it gets my number 19 number 18 and we have Mungo Jerry and you don't have to be in the army to fight in the war well it's just called you don't have to be in the army the single is you don't have to be in the army to fight in the war which I think is fantastic uh, take me back real sort of jug band stuff catchy as hell hey Rosalind which I think is a Paul King song and uh, it's beautiful with flutes and so forth and it um, really nice tinkling piano uh, there's a man going around taking names which is a catchy little number on a Sunday with the whistling is really really good fun Ellis Speed has got a, a real ragtime feel to it and Simple Things is a very very catchy track with a hink recorder in it those early dawn uh, Mungo Jerry albums are great and this gets my number 17 and just beating it in the same year my number 16 is their other one from 1971 and it's electronically tested and they got the name of this from a packet of condoms now this actually contains two number one hit singles in the summertime which was on the American version of their debut album but it didn't feature in the UK but they put it on this and Baby Jump which is the most surprising number one you would ever hear because it's completely different I don't mind it but it's not fantastic but you get really great tracks on here like She Rode which I think is fantastic Somebody Stole My Wife you would think would be a very heartbreaking song is it egg is like it is so funny and it is really really uplifting with kazoos and all the rest of it really good follow me down is another brilliant um mungo jerry stumper as well um memory memoirs of a stockbroker is a track it sounds a little bit like the kinks you do get a cover version here uh, i just want to make love to you the old track that even the stones did it's okay not brilliant but I think it's just edges uh, you don't have to be in the army but on another day it would flip the other way but they're two really really strong albums they're second and third albums and at number 15 we have Rod Stewart and Every Picture Tells a Story and this was a massive album it includes Maggie May which is one of the best singles ever Mandolin Wind's beautiful as well Reason to Believe is actually the A side of Maggie May until the DJs flip them and it's a Tim Harden song reason to believe but it is absolutely beautiful the title track I think is really really good and I love the version of Bob Dylan's Tomorrow is a Long Time uh, Seems Like a Long Time is another really good track it's um, most of the faces are playing this, on this as well but it's more acoustic than the faces and you know it deserved to get the success it did and I think it's great and it gets my number 16 and number 15 and it is Sparks and it's their debut album and it was originally released as Half Nelson it failed and then they changed their name to Sparks released this again and it failed so um, it's a really good debut album and it's more accessible than their second one their third one was it came on my house uh, in 74 which made them big over here in the UK but you get Wonder Girl which was a single which is a good track Fala Fali I think is really really catchy Roger and Hi C they're, they're really good songs and they're way 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 ahead of their time Slow Boat gorgeous ballad start off side 2 Saccharin in the War is probably my favourite track off this and you get a track called No More Mr Nice Guys it's not the Alice Cooper song uh, I think this one came first but um, yeah absolutely great album from Sparks their debut so that gets my number 15 and number 14 and we have The Who and Who's Next yeah it's not my favourite Who album but I still do appreciate it Baba O'Reilly I think is very good it's not as good as what a lot of people think however it won't get fooled again is as good although I do still prefer the single version but tracks I really like off here are My Wife the John and Whistle track Getting In Tune I think is very good as is Going Mobile uh, Behind Blue Eyes beautiful really is and Bargain's not bad so yeah really really strong album and I can understand this being uh, many people's favourite Who album but for me it's really good but it's not as good as um, the 60s one so who's next gets my number 14
and at 13 I have John Lennon's Imagine. Yeah, the title track has been overplayed, but I still do enjoy it. I don't like anybody else singing it. It has to be John Lennon. Uh, during lockdown, they did this sort of remote singing. Ah, it was awful. Really was bad. But Crippled Inside I've always enjoyed, and Jealous Sky is beautiful, although it goes on a little bit too long. Oh My Love is one of my all-time favourite John Lennon songs. I really think it is brilliant, as is How. I think it's a really, really good song as well. And I'm a big fan of Oh Yobo. Catchy as hell. The ones I'm not keen on, I do like How Do You Sleep, but I don't like the words. And um, I Don't Want to Be a Soldier is not one of the best either. And I'm not that keen on It's So Hard, although it's okay. But generally speaking, it's a good album. Again, it's not my favourite Lennon album. That's my game, but still, it gets by. Number 13. At number 12, and we have Led Zeppelin 4. Uh, Black Dog, brilliant. Stop Start, absolutely fantastic. Rock and Roll, fantastic rock and roller. Battle of Evermore is very good. Stairway to Heaven, not sick of it, very good. Four Sticks, not keen on it. And uh, Going to California is alright, as is when the levee breaks. I do like Misty Mountain Hop because I think it's got a really uh, weird riff to it, almost like an awkward type riff, but I really think it's very very good, so uh, Led Zeppelin 4 by number 12. At number 11, and it is Carole King and Tapestry, and this is a beautiful album, I Feel the Earth Move, great, so far away, absolutely beautiful song, It's Too Late, it's a good single, um, You've Got a Friend, uh, absolutely beautiful, I know it's a James Taylor song, or co-written, uh, Will You Love Me Tomorrow, I think is fantastic version of that. It really works as a slow piano version. You make me feel like a natural woman. Great. This sold by the bucket load and you can understand why. It's just a really good strong album and she never really lived up to this. Some of her albums are good like writer and music and even fantasy is not bad but they're not in the same league as Tapestry. Okay getting into the top 10. I mean number 10 is Don McLean and American Pie and excellent album. American Pie, overplayed, but still enjoy it when I hear it. Vincent, absolutely beautiful song. Uh, Till Tomorrow, gorgeous, as is Crossroads. Um, Winterwood, beautiful, Empty Chairs, I absolutely love it. It's a really stripped back acoustic song. Uh, Babylon, I think, is very, very good as well. Sister Fatima is my least favourite of it, but still, absolutely brilliant album. And this, along with Tapestry and Don McLean, are the best three albums. So. Don McLean's American Pie gets my number 10. At number 9 and we have Elton John and Madman Across the Water. Yeah, the one with Tiny Dancer and Levon on it, but they weren't released over here as singles. No singles off this. Razor Face, great track, as is the title track. Holiday Inn, I've always liked because it's slightly different. It's sort of more, less piano led. And I think it's really good. Uh, Rotten Peaches, very catchy, as is uh, All the Nasties excellent album. I'm not overly keen on Indian Sunset. That's the only one I'm not that fussed on but it's still an absolutely brilliant album and I guess my number nine. And at number eight we have The Kinks and Muswell Hillbillies. And this is their first for RCA and it features 20th Century Man. Absolutely brilliant. And you get the horns of acute schizophrenia blues which I think is fantastic. Holidays are a real sort of a drowsy type song which is great. And Alcohol I think is a fantastic track as well. Skin and Bone has got that little bit of a rockabilly feel to it, which is great. And Have a Cup of Tea is so English, it's unbelievable, but it is fantastic as well. Oklahoma, USA um, is a little bit more uh, Americana. In fact, the album itself sounds a little bit more Americana than any other albums. Holloway Jail, likewise, and Muswell Hill Bullies is like an upbeat country song. Really, really good album, and that's my number eight. At number seven, and we have Paul McCartney and Linda McCartney, Ram. Now this is most people's favourite Paul McCartney album. It's not mine, but it's up there. Uncle Albert, Albert Halsey, love it. Heart of the Country, love it. Little acoustic number. Eat at Home's got a bit of a Buddy Holly feel to it, which is great as well. Long Haired Lady, I absolutely love it because I love Linda's voice. I do. I think I'm the only one in the world that really thinks Linda McCartney. That uh, really does enhance Paul McCartney's work, and that's what's missing from his recent stuff, I think. Backseat of My Car was the single here, really good. Ending goes on a little bit too long, but still excellent song. And Dear Boy, very good track. 
very very good album and it gets my number seven at number six and we have Van Morrison and Tupelo Honey and I would have had this in the top 30 but much lower down but again playing this this week I was absolutely blown away by it. Wild Night I've always loved fantastic track uh, Straight to Your Heart Like a Cannonball fantastic it really is so catchy uh, Old Old Woodstock again it's very melodic and uh, starting a new life again very catchy as well you're My Woman is sort of a bluesy, very heartfelt number and very slow, but it's really, really good. And Tupelo Honey itself must be one of the top 10 Van Morrison songs of all time. I Want to Rue You is like a little country number, which is actually quite good. And uh, Moonshine Whiskey, I think, is an excellent closer. Excellent album, and I think this is up there now with my favourite Van Morrison albums have been the top three before it would have been just the top 10 so shoot below one I guess my number six and number five and it is the moody blues and every good boy deserves favor and moody blues like Queen everybody contributed to the song right in here uh, procession which is an instrumental and it goes in all directions including little bits of indie music is fantastic and parts of it are used in the track um, one more time to love which I think is really really good um, after you came is a rocker and it's Graham H song the drummer which I think is very very good and uh, my favorite track off this is the story in your eyes which is just a Justin Hayward song I think it's magnificent Emily's song beautiful by John Lodge um, I also like the two Ray Thomas ones um, our guessing game and nice to be here nice to be here reminds me of froggy went to court and it's like an animal type song but it's really really good fun this is my second favorite moody blues album behind to our children's children's children uh, I think it's excellent and I love that cover as well beautiful cover so that gets my number five number four and I'm giving it to the Rolling Stones and Sticky Fingers Brown Sugar opens it, brilliant. Sway, a really underrated song, but fantastic. Wild Horses, maybe a tad overrated for me, but I still really do like it. And Can't You Hear Me Knocking, magnificent. And I really do like that psychedelic haze they go into at the end of the song. You Gotta Move is the only one I'm not keen on. It's a wee bluesy number. And you get things like Bitch, brilliant. Moonlight Mile, absolutely fantastic. I got the blues. I'm not a blues fan, but I really love that song. Sister Morphine's very good. And Dead Flowers is okay if he would cut out the Southern States accent, but still. Brilliant album from 1971, of course. And that's Sticky Fingers, my number four. My number three, and it is Cat Stevens and Teaser in the Fire Cat. And I used to say that I love nine of these songs and can't stand one of them, but I do like them all now. The one that I used to not like is Changes 4, but I've got used to it. The wind going into Ruby Love is gorgeous. If I Laugh is gorgeous. Now can I tell you, it is absolutely beautiful as well. Very acoustic. Ruby Love has got a little bit of sort of Greek instruments in it, which I think is really uplifting. Side 2, Tuesday's Dead, um, the acoustic guitar, very, very melodic. Morning is Broken, love it to bits. Bitter Blue, really good. Moon Shadow, a uh, fantastic uh, picking of the guitar in that song, really, really melodic. And of course, Peace Train is a great track. Brilliant album from Cat Stevens, and it is my favourite of his, and it's my number three teaser in the Fire Cat. Which means my number two, and it is David Bowie, Hunky Dory. Side one is perfect with changes, all you pretty things, eight line poem, Life on Mars, Cooks, and Quicksand. Side 2 is not quite as perfect. There's a couple of tracks that I'm not as keen on. I'm not as keen on Song for Bob Dylan, nor am I as keen on Andy Warhol. But I do like Fill Your Heart, the uh, Biff Rose track. Queen Bitch is brilliant, and I really love the Bewley Brothers, although I could do without that end bit, which I think brings it down a little bit. But it's still an absolutely fantastic album. I do have a boy, and I guess my number two. So no guessing what my number one is because I'm wearing it on the shirt and yeah I think my number one album from 1971 is T-Rex Electric Warrior. We have Mambo Son, what an opener. Uh, Jeepsters on this, brilliant even though it is nicked from Howlin' Moose, uh, He'll Be Mine or something like that. Uh, Get It On, fantastic track, named Banger Gong in America. Monolith, the most underrated uh, T-Rex song. 
uh, Life's a Gas is absolutely beautiful as is Cosmic Dancer Lean Woman Blues I wasn't keen on that whenever I first heard this but I really do like it now Girls decent enough as is Planet Queen and then Rip Off I think is amazing it's almost like the first rap song absolutely fantastic ending to the album I will say the, the B-side of Get It On was There Is A Time uh, Raw Ramp which should have been on this album and it would have enhanced it even further but still absolutely brilliant album and gets my number one from 1971 okay that's my uh, favourite 30 albums from 1971 I hope you enjoyed that I'll put another poll up to see what I'll do next so um, that's me for now uh, all the best bye bye